Hello and welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your host this week, Sebastian Bentley. I'm coming to you from my house in California. Uh, due to social distancing requirements, we're going to be doing this whole show remote um, and it's still live. So please bear with us uh, if we're having any technical difficulties. We've got an awesome show for you guys this week. Uh, we're taking a look at the legendary Randy Rhodes and some of the famous songs he helped write uh, while playing with Ozzy Osbourne. So we're going to be playing a ton of notes. It's going to be really loud. Everything's going to be really fast. It's going to be awesome. So we also have some special discounts for you viewers, and we're going to be giving away some gear later as usual. So stick around. Uh, but first, uh, through the power of modern technology and broadband internet, I'm thrilled to announce that our guest is going to be coming to us from the other side of the world. Uh, coming to us live from Greece, we have Gus G. Welcome. Hey, Sebastian. How's it going, man? Good, man. Good to see you, Gus. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for connecting with us. I'm um, stoked to kind of talk through some stuff today on the on the classic Randy riffs and licks and all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, man, how, uh, what, what time is it over there right now? Um, it's um, 10 p.m. here. <laughs> so dang. dang. Well, that's wild. I'm just, uh, you know, it's noon over here, but I'm still having my coffee. I, I wake up late because I'm a long haired guitar player. So, you know, yeah. classic. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's really cool. It's so cool that we can kind of connect and talk through all this stuff, um, you know, in yeah. real time. You know, thanks for having this, me. This whole yeah. quarantine. Absolutely. Absolutely. This this uh, this whole quarantine thing would be a, a lot less fun, you know, 20 years ago. Um, but anyways, <laughs> uh, just to talk about Gus a little bit. He's a guitarist and uh, founder of his band Firewind. Um, he's played with bands like Mystic Prophecy, Night Rage, uh, Arch Enemy, Dream Evil, and of course, uh, none other than the Prince of Darkness himself, Ozzy Osbourne. So we're thrilled to have you on the show to talk about Randy Rhodes. Uh, but let's just start with some basics here. You know, a question we ask everybody, uh, how long have you been playing guitar and how'd you get started? Yeah, uh, I've been playing guitar for a long, long time. Um, uh, I'll be 40 this year and I started playing when I was 10, so about 30 years. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I started, um, yeah, I, I started out on a, on a classical guitar that my dad got me. And, um, yeah, I was, I was a little bit disappointed back then. I remember because I wanted an electric guitar and an amp so I can rock out. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't get my, uh, first electric guitar, which was a Fender Strat, by the way, uh, nice. until I was, uh, 14. Yeah. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah. So you kind of started, did you start with like a lot of finger style stuff and like kind of doing that classical technique or was it, you know, more pick style not, and just not really, it was, it was finger style, but it was like very basic stuff, like really, really basic in the first few years uh, through a local mm -hmm. school, like, you know, nothing like proper classically trained or anything, anything crazy like that. Uh, you know, just like a few basic chords, but, um, it was all good, man. I, I think, you know, when I picked up the electric guitar, it was more like that's, that's when all the you know hard practicing started and you know started practicing like eight hours a day and all those like in my teens yeah. i went through that kind of a period where i was like this was all that existed basically to me like if i was not in in school i was in my room locked you know locked up and playing guitar so yeah fun years yeah absolutely yeah absolutely very cool stuff uh, but yeah we also like to ask everybody a little bit about the gear that they're playing and all that stuff and and you got a crazy looking guitar there it's, got, it's a jackson like got the star shape and a whole bunch of cool cool outfits on there so you want to tell us a little bit about that yeah yeah sure man um yeah this is my uh jackson signature model um like you said yeah it's a star shape so um it's pretty cool guitar it's pretty metal i guess and you know I play heavy metal, so it's it, it's it fits nice. And um, I've been playing these shapes for many, many years. So it's sort of like the people that follow me and they know me. They sort of, you know, my image sort of identifies with this shape. Um, sure. So yeah, I mean, this is like the latest model that we just launched at at Nam a few months ago. Um, so it's pretty cool. Cool, um, like a interesting. Um, modern vintage kind of blend so you know it's the ivory color and uh you know the chrome hardware and the pickup covers and the block inlays the white binding it's pretty yeah. cool yeah i've uh yeah yeah i mean I've, like i said this is like my main go-to guitar so yeah. sweet 
Well, it definitely looks cool. Um, would love to. I, I bet it sounds pretty pretty ripping as well. Do you want to do you want to open that bad boy up and play a little yeah. bit for us? Right on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, that thing sounds great. I mean, you've got the you've got the high gain thing happening. Those pickups are probably pretty pretty high output, but you're still getting a lot of clarity. Those are those are really cool. They're they're active pickups, so uh, okay. They're actually uh, my own design. I started my own pickup company recently, so this uh, it's kind of unique because they uh, we you know this model just lives on this guitar like an, as an exclusive now. So uh, you know maybe make them available later for retail and stuff. But yeah, this is like my new design and. Um, Sounds pretty cool, you know. Good, like yeah, good, you know, a lot of high output, like you said, but also a lot of clarity and good mid range. So it's a good balance. Yeah, it's great. Awesome. Well, uh, I'll just I'll, I'll tell the audience a little bit about what I'm playing as well. I've got the uh, the brand new Meteora HH model here, which is pretty cool. Um, it's got uh, string through body uh, bridge, so it gets a nice sustain. Um, dual humbucking pickups with a uh, a coil tap because. I'm a I'm a heavy metal guy, but I'm I'm sort of weird. I, I actually really like the sound of like a single coil um, with some yeah. with some high gain. Um, so I can play a little bit of this guy. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, this guy's sounding pretty good too. We're gonna be Are having some fun on this. Pickups? Yeah, these are passive pickups. I think they're the the Fender American Performance series. I, I I forget the exact name of them, but they're they're really cool because they're um they're not the highest output. They're more of like a PF PAF style. Yeah. Um, which I kind of like, you know, because you get a lot of sort of that picking dynamic, and you dig in a little bit harder, you get a little bit more, Absolutely. you know. Um, you know, when I was younger, I was playing a lot of active pickups and that sort of stuff. Uh, it got a little, you know, sometimes those can be a little hot for like for my taste. So this is a nice kind of kind of middle sure. ground for that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's let's keep it moving here before we jump in uh, with some songs and stuff. Um, just wanted to mention to the audience at home, if you guys have any questions for Gus or myself throughout the show, feel free to drop those in the comments and we can address those. Um, also, I don't know if you all noticed this rad shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, we're offering a special discount to you viewers. You can get 30% off today by using the promo code Meteora30. Um, it's only our, uh, valid for 24 hours, so check it out via the link in the description. Um, so anyways, we've got Gus G here from uh, live from Greece, so I think we got to kick it into some, uh, some playing. So there's four Aussie tunes on Fender Play right now, so let's go ahead and jump right in with, uh, with a classic from... Uh, from that era how about we play a little bit uh, over the mountain let's do that yeah um i love Rock that song it. actually that's the first believe it or not that's the first uh aussie song i ever heard when i was a kid like oh, that wow. was, you know yeah the no intro way. for you know dire of a madman the, and i remember like the you know the drum intro and then that riff it's blew me away so anyways here here it is for you a little bit so <laughs> That's just the main riff and the verse, so yeah. Awesome, yeah, man. That sounded really, really cool. You know, obviously we got that some of that gallop style happening, a lot of palm muting and and those things. And we're gonna talk a little bit about those techniques um, over you know over the rest of the show. So um, let's go ahead and I, I uh, do you have uh, some of the solo for that part uh, for that song as well? Some of those lead parts that come in later on. 
Yeah, sure. I'm going to give it a shot. I mean, yes. you know, excuse any mistakes. I haven't played that stuff for a while. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it for you. So I'm going to take it from the bridge here because I, there's this really cool riff. Speaking of galloping riffs, which is, um, it, anyways, I'm going to play it and uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Something like that, anyway. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll say, man, that's awesome. Actually, this solo uh, has so a lot of um, has a lot of uh, whammy bar techniques and stuff. With, and, and I'm playing like a you know stop tail bridge, so I'm, I don't, I don't, I couldn't replicate exactly. But anyway, so uh, I uh, sure, improvise. but yeah, man, but you're making it work. I mean, I remember seeing a video of Randy when I was when I was like you know 13 or 14, and he was doing some of that similar sort of stuff with like a Les Paul. I mean, he wasn't the biggest guy too, so the Les Paul was like the yeah. size of his body, and he's doing all those, you know, the yeah, neck yeah, bends yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So that great, really, yeah. really cool stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, we're just talking today, obviously, about Randy Rhodes and. Um, hopefully some ways that people at home can maybe try to sound a little bit like Randy, you know, a little bit as impossible as it may seem. It's, it's impossible. Know, he's Randy but Rhodes, I mean, man. It's very, the thing is, it's what you got to take away from a guy like that is just, uh, you know, the, the fact that he's, the, his style is so influential. So, mm. you know, I, I always say this to, you know, whenever I do any clinics or something like that, you know, it's don't try to be somebody else about, you know, take their licks, you know, like, try to learn, keep the stuff that you like and try to do your, give your own twist to it. So, and Randy definitely has a lot of, lot of cool ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, we wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, his musical background was classical guitar and piano. Yeah. Um, and he was certainly a big uh, part of like sort of the neoclassical guitar movement. Um, how would you, how would you describe that to some people that might not be so familiar with that kind of sound? Um, is there, are there certain scales that are used? Is there, you know, kind of certain techniques or influences? Um, uh, maybe, maybe you can kind of play through some of that type of stuff. Well, the thing is, I mean, in my opinion, the cool thing with Randy was, you know, for being an American guitar player, he sounded very European, if you know what I mean, because of that mm -hmm. blending of that classical background and, you know, not only playing the, the, you know, the pentatonic or bluesier stuff, but also mixing it with, yeah, like diminished scales or like melodic minor and just, you know, very, also very melodic type of playing. And, you know, it was just like a great, like he's known for that his solos were like little compositions within the actual song. And that's what made him stand out in my opinion. That's why I, what, that's why I loved all his solos. They, they sound like really worked out and really you know he played like the right notes for this for the song and uh, yeah. I mean, there's tons of great examples i mean even even the stuff that i just played now uh, um uh, over the mountain you know like you know jumping from these riffs into this kind of solo where it's like it's like a theme and it develops you know and uh yeah yeah and i think Killer. he was a master at that yeah absolutely and uh you know i'll say definitely some of my favorite things with with randy are you know, um, he's got such a well, like composed thought through, like, you know, melodicism to a lot of his solos, yeah. but he doesn't get too far, like down the rabbit hole of, of being like overthought. You know, I think a lot of what's cool is like when you're listening to those recordings, you know, different fills will present them in different, in, in different ways. He does a lot of sort of, you know, some of those bluesy pull offs and things like that, like a lot of harmonics and just sort of like the extra weird guitar so sounds with harmonics and, you know, and, and, yeah. and bends and the, obviously the whammy bar stuff, you know, there's, yeah, there's a looseness right. too to his playing, which is really he's, cool. You're right. His, his, his rhythm playing was very interesting too. Like very, 
like you know he just didn't follow like like he, he played the riffs obviously and stuff but there was always these little fills and things that he would do on every turnaround and and that made it really unique absolutely but uh cool well we got some we got some questions that came in from the audience uh we've got one from youtube for gus uh which is your favorite randy riff Ooh, riff tough one uh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's a few um hard to say man like there's there's a lot of stuff i mean um I mean, Diary of a Madman. Um, mm. uh, what else? I don't know. Crazy Train, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's like the the, the blueprint of like you know the 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 sixth you know the sixth interval interval. That's how you sort of identify if you're learning like ear training and intervals. Like you know, mm -hmm. this is how you know when you know that's like that's it there. You know, that's how you remember Absolutely. the sixth interval. So I mean, that's. What an iconic riff. So a Absolutely. lot of great riffs, man. Yeah. Yeah, really cool. Awesome. Well, we'll get into some more questions and stuff from the audience later. And uh, but I think it's I think it's time for some more playing, you know. Um, yeah. since you just mentioned it, we we should probably dive in right there. Um, you know, arguably one of the most famous metal riffs of all time is uh, Crazy Train. And and Randy certainly gives us a full full workout through that whole song you know there's there's the there's the low palm music uh riff you know there's some galloping in the verse um and those crazy yeah. ripping lead lines in the solo um do you want to play a little bit of that one you know maybe sure. just kind of go through a couple sections hit the solo love to we'll yeah kind of talk about it awesome All right. <laughs> Sorry, I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> so on so on <laughs> yeah awesome that sounds great um and it was really cool to see too you know kind of adding in some of those fills and things you know kind of in your own style um as i mentioned before obviously you spent some years playing with ozzy himself so i gotta ask um and i think some of our from some of our listeners are tuning in with some questions about this as well um what was it like learning these songs for ozzy um i mean any insight do you have into the process for our learners out there um, you know, kind of either thinking about getting like really deep into the Randy Rhodes thing, or we were talking a little bit before the show about, you know, kind of making those songs your own and injecting your own style and vibe into it. So maybe you can kind of talk about a little bit of that process, just kind of making yeah. those sound, making those songs happen live yeah. and, and what you did to do it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, for me, it was like, I went into this gig with a mindset that I wanted to, uh, st um, stick to the originals as close as as much as possible because i, I knew that ozzy liked the, the the way the original recording sounded so i try to stay true to that you know but with with that said i mean and the good thing uh, when i joined was uh you know we had youtube and stuff like that so i, w I would uh, go and uh, search on each song like different versions you know from from bootleg recordings from different eras different players that were there you know before me uh you know how did I don't know how did Jakey Lee play Crazy Train or how was Zach Wild playing it or how did Joe Holmes play it or you know like all these things and sort of just like I did a lot of listening basically just to digest it a bit more even though I knew all these songs I grew up on that stuff but of course when you're like 
getting a gig like that, you're like, oh, wow, I have to <laughs> think about this seriously. Yeah. Because it's not like I'm going to learn going to learn it kind of, you know, for a, for a cover with my band or something. <laughs> uh -huh. So, uh -huh. so yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I did a lot of research like that. And then of course, yeah, like I said, I try to stay as close as, as true to the original as possible. And, you know, there's always like little parts here and there where you can add your own flavor to it. I mean, it's, it's impossible. It's going to sound like you no matter what, because it's your fingers and your sound. And, you know, I, you know, I wasn't trying to be that guy of course but uh but yeah it's like yeah giving that you know song the the, the respect and and the you know staying true to it and and, and uh, try to do the best job as possible of course and then of course you know there's always like these little parts here and there where you can do your own thing and um awesome. yeah that, that was the philosophy behind it at least for me you know cool very cool well, um, awesome stuff. Let's uh, let's keep it rolling here. You know, I want to hear a couple more tunes before before we um, get to some more questions and, and the community stuff. So, uh, just a reminder to all of our audience members right now: um, you can learn all the songs that we're playing here today on Fender Play. Um, and right now, it's free to sign up for three months. Uh, so take advantage of this offer. You know, obviously, free three months. Um, we're all sitting at home, got nothing to do but practice. So let's get uh, let's get some new tunes under your fingers. Um, so take advantage of that offer and take the next step to sounding like Randy Rhodes. Um, next, next up, uh, we're going to play a little bit of one of my favorite tunes. Um, speaking of covers, this was one of the first ones that I learned. Um, want to hear a little bit of Mr. Crowley. Oh yeah. That's actually my favorite. Yeah. Just, I, yeah. Oh man. I mean, just, just yeah. ripping. Love that a, song. So dark riff and, do you want to take yeah. it away for us? Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, for, I haven't played this stuff for like a long time. kind of thing anyway yes yes amazing that it's was, that was solo, crazy man. man yeah it's so good and, and like you mentioned you know it's kind of got these different parts that are you know uh you know relating to each other there's a full like arc to that composition the uh the song within a song if you will so really really cool stuff thanks for playing through all of that man yeah yeah um now 
we are going to have a bit of an angry mob after us if we don't at least take a few minutes to talk about Randy's guitar tone. Um, so, Gus, sure. uh, maybe do you want to kind of describe some of the things that are you know signature about his sound and, and maybe some of the things that you do um, or that you've done to to kind of create that sound um, in your own playing? Well, you know, it, for me, it wasn't so much trying to recreate his tone or anything. Um, I used different <laughs> gear than he did, you know, different amps, different pedals and stuff. But, you know, like I... I knew, you know, he, he had like obviously, you know, that British uh, sound, like EL34 type of sound, you know, with, uh, you know, with, with a tube screamer type of thing, you know, and um, yeah, um, I mean, my approach, you know, I, I play with high gain amps, obviously at different times, so, um, so my main tone, my main distortion always came from, from the amp, you know, without really having much uh, extra uh, booster pedals. So sometimes I use them, but... Um, but yeah, when it came to Randy again, like you know, in my opinion, he was like the sort of like the 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 prototype of the modern metal guitar player. Um, you know, of course, as an image, but also as a sound. You know, the tone that was part of it, the whole thing. You know, his style, his sound. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, oh, really cool. Yeah, and uh, I mean, he certainly was known for um, sort of some some outlandish guitar shapes. He's got that classic, uh, the Randy Rhodes Flying V, and you know, yeah, um, polka dot guitar. Him with the, the polka dot guitar, right? Um, and we were talking a little bit before the show about this. I think there's some connected lineage between the guy that built his guitars and and, and your signature model. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Um, the guy who built his Flying V, Mike Shannon built this guitar that i'm holding here he's the master builder of over at uh, jackson so he built uh, all the custom shop guitars for artists um and yeah i'm just you know it's a privilege to work with a with a legendary guy like him you know absolutely especially when you end up with a cool guitar like that there you go <laughs> <Yeah>. uh. <laughs> Awesome. And then uh, just some other like, you know, more more nitpicky guitar nerd things, because we're here. That's what we talk about. Um, uh, we were hearing about um, we were talking about string gauge. Um, you know, I think there's there's often a debate with uh, players that are first starting, like what they should use, like whether it makes a difference. Um, I think uh, we, Randy actually used like nines on Blizzard of Oz. Um, which, you know, some, some people might, uh, turn their nose up at the strings that are that light. Maybe they don't get the tone that they're looking for. We certainly talked a few weeks ago about like Stevie Ray's a guy who uses these thick strings. Yeah. Um, but I was curious, uh, for your take on this, you know, um, what kind of string gauge do you use? You know, does it, it do, do you, does it help your tone? You know, some people like the tone that they're going to get from those thinner strings. Cause you're going to get a little bit more like kind of stringiness to the sound. Um, but yeah, yeah. do, do you want to kind of talk about those? Yeah, like in, in my opinion, it, first of all, I mean, for me, it doesn't really matter. It's all a matter of, of personal preference. I mean, for younger players, like my tip would be just it's, it's like trial and error, really try out different uh, string gauges and, and see what feels more comfortable for you. Um, so for me, because I'm tuned on one whole step down, so I, it's like a I, I like my gauge is like 10 to 56. So it's a okay. little bit, little bit heavier, or somewhere there in the middle, which you know, it's it's like slinky enough to bend strings on the higher, you know, the higher, the lighter strings, and but also for the lower string, it's it's uh, thick enough where it's like you know, I have that snap, you know, so it's not too slinky when you play riffs, you know. Um, gotcha. But that's just for, that. That's what works for me. So um, I don't think it's a mistake, or it's it shouldn't be. It's not good if you're playing lighter strings or. You know, other guys they just want to fight it with the guitar a bit more, so they'll go even for even <laughs> thicker strings. So yeah, it depends, man. Absolutely. To each tone. So I mean, it doesn't mean that you don't get a good enough tone if you have lighter strings. So, and that's that. You know, that's just me. Right. Totally. Yeah. It's just it's just different. You know, and different different strokes for different folks. That's what makes makes guitar so cool. There's a lot of different ways to to kind of approach it. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, for those of you, uh, playing along at home, I uh, wanted to talk to you guys about a quick little thing. Um, if you have a Mustang amp at home, like what I'm playing out of right here, the uh, Mustang GTX 100, um, you can actually download our Randy Rhodes presets from the Fender Tone 3.0 app. Um, I've got it set on the over the mountain setting right now. Um, <laughs> It's pretty close, you know. It is. Um, and we've got 
got settings actually for each of the four song, uh, sounds, um, and it's super cool. Like you can kind of go through and tweak everything on your phone, put different pedals in there. Um, I love these things, especially for folks that um, are learning about how to construct a guitar tone. I think it's really cool to have those different options of uh, you know this style amp or that style amp or this type of pedal, and you know kind of building a signal chain like you do with a real rig before going fully down the rabbit roll and buying a zillion pedals and a bunch of amps and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's a great way to get started. Absolutely. Um, so, so yeah, that's uh, that's what we got going on with the with the Fender Tone app that's just come out. Um, and let's keep it rolling here. We got one more tune to play through, so let's let's end with a bang. Let's hear uh, "Flying High" again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like more of a rocking type of track, you know, like uh, this. Uh That's a, kind of like the, the yeah. main fan of the song. Yeah, really cool I love that. Stuff that Randy did actually, you know, I mean, uh, like a lot of cool, like this is like, you know, playing from A major and then doing stuff like. Or when he changed to F sharp, you know, playing thirds, you know. Sus two chords here on the D. Yeah. Like a lot of nice colors, Absolutely. you know, he added. Very, uh, totally gives you a lot of cool ideas. I mean, he has influenced me actually on my rhythm playing a lot. I use a lot of those kind of tricks when I play rhythm. Totally, totally. And, you know, big, big difference, I think, from, uh, you know, what Ozzy was doing before with, uh, with Sabbath and, you know, Tony, you know, cause Tony's approach is like kind of its own thing. And, and Randy was just, I mean, he just has so many levels of, of more stuff that yeah. he was thinking Tony, about. Yeah, it was like, cool and, too. You know, it was like like doomy riffs, you know, like slow and really heavy sludgy stuff. And then, you know, Randy had, you know, he had that, he mixed that kind of um, hard rock, glam rock, if you like, uh, yeah. with heavy metal. And uh, yeah. of course, kind of cool for, for a learning curve too. As well. What's that? Yep. Uh, kind of cool, I was thinking, for a learning curve for, for people that are learning, you know, as you go through, um, you know, Ozzy's career, if you start with some of the Sabbath stuff, usually that's, you know, a little bit more accessible. I remember kind of going through that myself when I when I started, you know, you could get you know some of those uh, those easier riffs down and then move on to the Randy stuff and oh, yeah. really, really opens up there. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's how, that's how I started out with that stuff, too. Like, first, you know, I picked up the Sabbath stuff, you know, like Iron Man and Children of the Grave and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, it's just easier to and really cool to play really fun you know power chords and stuff and it's and then you get into like i said more technical stuff i mean yeah and i mean totally different players of course you know and then and, and tony iomi is you know is he's is such an innovator you know without him we probably wouldn't be sitting here talking about heavy metal so yeah absolutely yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's let's get into a couple of these questions. We've had uh, we've had a few from the audience here, so we're going to do a little speed round, uh, hammer through some some quick uh, quick questions here. Um, sure. Here's one from Rosalro. He's asking uh, which guitar you used for the audition with Ozzy. Oh, um, I used one of my old ESP guitars. I used to play ESP before Jackson. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I had like one of my. Right. Uh, it was like one of my custom shops. Yeah. Sick. Very cool. Uh, another quick one from Humble. Um, they're asking, what's your secret for speed? Well, um, the secret is actually, it's, uh, I mean, there is no secret for that. That's the thing. And there's no shortcut, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's, it's really, um, it's, it's really just, uh, practicing with a metronome slowly, you know, learn all your licks and make sure you play them at slow speed first. If you can play anything um, clean at a slow speed, you can play it clean at any speed. And that's 
to me that's more that's like the the secret like keeping everything clean and and um precise mm -hmm. like a lot you know it's a lot of players they they um you know they they see their their left hand moving fast but then they forget about this guy the picking hand so you know yeah. it's all about like the the coordination of the two and like if you're going to play three notes on one string make sure you pick them right you know? <laughs> So those kind of things, but in order to do that, you need to start at a very slow speed, you know. Absolutely. And it takes Absolutely. time. It's, it's well, not something that happens overnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to bang your head against the wall for for quite some time to get that down. But uh, yeah, man, very cool. Super, super insightful. Um, couple more here. Just uh, one question from William. Um, he wants to know if you can give any tips. Uh, for transitioning from playing rhythm to uh, learning lead guitar, you know, is there maybe some things that you different do differently as far as your pick grip or where you're picking on the strings or how you approach those things uh, as from like rhythm to lead, like we're we're kind of talking yeah. about. Well, first of all, I would say that it's very important to to be good at rhythm guitar, and uh, I mean, not you know, everybody you know picks and chooses what they want. If you feel like being more of a rhythm player, not run, nothing wrong with that. You know, there's there's rhythm players that are insane, you know, and, and they don't really play leads. But I always wanted to be good at both or good enough at both, you know. So, um, mm. um, so yeah, I mean, uh, you know, rhythm, rhythm playing is a totally different beast from lead guitar. That's different techniques, you know, especially in metal. When you play rhythm, it's all about, you know, the downstrokes and the palm mutes and stuff like that. And, um, you know, once you get into lead playing obviously you know you're dealing with other techniques like you know bending strings and vibrato and you know scales and that kind of world you know all these things and how to you know relative minor scales all that thing you know relative major minor scales but um um i mean i would say practice both you know like set, set some time where you practice your rhythm playing you know i don't know it depends everybody has i don't know how much time everybody has per, every day but to practice but like if you have a couple of hours, you know, uh, make sure to um, don't don't neglect your rhythm style or your lead style. Maybe do like you know 30 minutes of uh, a lead or something, and then you know do another 30 minutes. Maybe learn a new chord a day, and then like work for one hour on your scales or something. So mm -hmm. um, try to be you know Very more cool. of a all around player. You know that's what I'm trying to say here, I guess. Great, yeah, because I mean I certainly think. Um, you know, rhythm and play and, and lead guitar, like you're still working with, you got to play tight, you know, you got to have the synchronicity between your hands, you know, there's a lot of skills that cross over, but, uh, but the approach, you know, kind of keeping those ideas separate in the practice room is a really helpful way to go about it. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, uh, remember if you want any of you guys following along at home, if you want to learn any of these songs, uh, check them out on Fender Play. It's still free to sign up for three months. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, we're all sitting home, so there's no better time to learn. Um, so for everybody at home, we're actually going to give you a couple things to kind of work on, as is tradition in Fender Play Live. Uh, we are These are just some simple things that you can work on, um, obviously for more lessons, uh, skills, and to learn all the songs from today. Be sure to check out Fender Play, but we wanted to assign some homework to, the, to everybody at home. So we're going to do a, a beginner, an intermediate, and an advanced assignment. Gus, if you want to take it away and talk about uh, each level for us. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, thank you. So, I mean, um, for for a more beginner type of players, I would suggest maybe work a uh, work on on a, on a palm mute type of thing. Maybe uh, try to do like a gallop thing here, like a simple thing on one string, like for example, on the A string. Sorry. Don't play it as fast as I do. That try to try it very slow, you know, like, and you know. Also, if you have any trouble, just you know, playing the open and uh, open the uh, um, chord and going back into palm muting. Focus on one part at a time, isolated. So maybe just isolate it, you know, here on the on your palm mute, you know. Try that slowly with a metronome and maybe slowly then integrate like a chord hit, you know, after that. And then put, you know, those two together, and then there you have like a cool riff. So awesome. that's a good exercise to work on, I think. 
Um, cool. Maybe for a an, uh, more intermediate player, maybe, a, I don't know, I would say Crazy Train Riff. That's pretty cool. Play that after school. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Awesome. Yeah, I love how you're kind of putting your own touch on the two. That'd be a cool, cool thing for some of those intermediate players to try. Adding some of those like pinch harmonics. Yeah, yeah a little some bit of like those that. little things. You know, yeah, a little character there for you. There's harmonics all over the place here. And so if you and that's another cool thing. Like for example, if you take one note and do this, because a lot of people ask me about the pinch harmonics. How do you do it? Obviously, you have to put a little bit of uh like dig in a bit deeper with a, a tip of the pick and also at the end, you know, give it a little bit of a um, squeal with your, with, use your thumb a little bit. So, and there's harmonics all over here, you know, from, you know, throughout this. So, you know, experiment with that when you play that riff and then try out different ways and different ideas. Sick. And then uh, we got one for the advanced players among us. A little little challenge you want to throw down, Gus? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, uh, the Mr. Crowley solo is just uh, such an epic solo, such a classic. And there's a lot of cool technical things there to dig in and, and learn. I mean, I would suggest just go for the whole thing. But if I have to narrow it down to just one thing, I would say this lick, the opening lick of the solo, is um, that's a really cool exercise. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So advanced players, give that a whirl and uh, we'll see see if you can kind of throw a video at us in, in the community and, and uh, yeah, just we'll all keep shredding here. So uh, big thank you to Gus G. Um, appreciate you coming in and, and linking with us from, from the other side of the world there. Thank you. Uh, we're going to be bringing you back on in a little bit for our final chord. Uh, but before that, is there anything going on in your world that you wanted to tell us about, uh, you know, any new music coming out or anything, anything you'd like to share? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, in just a couple of days, I'm uh, releasing a new album with my own band, which is called Firewind. So the album drops on Friday, May 15th. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a self-titled album. It's our ninth al studio album, but it's self-titled, so it's just titled Firewind. Uh, so yeah, if you guys are digging what you hear here today, so... Just go and check it out, um, whether on our website, firewind.gr, or, or on our social media, or you can find me on social media, Gus G Official, and, you know, check out the new music. And, um, yeah, thanks thanks for your time, really. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So thanks, Gus. Uh, stick around, and, and we'll, we'll see you soon. All right. um, so remember, too, everybody, um, if you want this sweet uh, Meteor T-shirt, you can get it for 30% off today with the offer code Meteor30. Uh, but you only got 24 hours, so act fast. Uh, next up, let's bring on our friend Dylan uh, to tell us who won this week's gear giveaway. Welcome, Dylan. Woo, hey, guys. How you doing? Great show. This hey, awesome. man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, very good to see you, as always. Um, let's tell, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're, what you're playing over there? You got a cool little Strat, the HSS with the Floyd and all that stuff. You want to you rip into that guy a little bit for us? Yeah, this is a player Strat uh, HSS. This is kind of the, one of the Cadillac models, if you will. And um, it's, uh, it's Tide Pull Blue. Tide Pull Blue. I thought that was very, Ooh. a lot of mystique in that name, you know? So let's see, I'll play something for you. Uh, so it's got like a, a lot of varied tone that you could play on this guy. Pretty cool wow. pickups in there, and it's a great guitar to play. Yeah, really, really cool, man. Well, thanks for sharing. Uh, but yeah, now for our viewers who watch us every week, uh, you know we also like to give away some gear um, every week for our Fender Play giveaway. Um, if you're just joining us for the first time, uh, Dylan, do you want to explain to us a little bit about what that's about? Yeah, so each week we give away a guitar, an amp, or a lot of things that you can select from. Uh, and we give it away for you basically doing three seven-minute sessions or a streak 
on uh, on offender play. So if you do three seven minute sessions or three streaks, you're automatically entered to win. And uh, again, you get to pick from guitars, amps, there's all kinds of stuff that you can pick from. It's not just strings or picks, this is big stuff. It's worth checking out and it's worth uh, getting your streaks in. Awesome, well that's super cool, man. Uh, do you wanna tell us who won this week? Yeah, are you guys ready for this? All right, give me a little bit yeah. of fanfare. Give me a little bit of noise, here we go. Oh, oh. Mike F, Mike F, <laughs> All right. on down, Mike. Congratulations, Woo! sir. Yeah. Yeah, congrats, Mike. Very cool. So uh, congrats, Mike. Enjoy your new guitar, bass, amp, or whatever you choose. Uh, check the link in the description uh, for more details on this weekly gear giveaway. Um, now, of course, another perk of being involved in Fender Play is access to our Facebook community. Of We're almost at 50,000 learners. Um, it's a really friendly and supportive place where people share their progress, um, ask questions, show off their gear. Um, and you also get access to our instructors who are hosting live office hours and answering questions seven days a week. Um, so Dylan, you got some shout outs for the community this week for us? Yeah, a lot of action. Office hours are amazing. Uh, we've got a lot of extra content that's going on there live just about every day of the week. So uh, check it out. Make sure you check out whatever's pinned to the top of that group because you can go learn a lot from what uh, the instructors and everybody's sharing. This week, I want to mention uh, Frederick Jeffrey who, uh, he basically shared his first attempt at time of the season, which is the time of the season. You know that song, right? Okay. Uh, he shared it, and he's uh, he's been working with two weeks on Fender Play. Two weeks. I'll tell you, this guy's got a lot of chutzpah to be able to put that on there, and we really Damn. appreciated that because that kind of shows everybody uh, you can do this too. So thanks a lot, uh, Frederick, for doing that. That's that's killer. Awesome. Really cool. Two weeks of playing, man. That's wild. I know. Um, I know. Well, very cool. Um, yeah, just another another perk of uh, Fender Play that I wanted to mention. Uh, there's obviously there's thousands of lessons for you to learn from and hone your own style. There's blues, there's pop, there's country, there's shredding, there's metal, there's there's all sorts of stuff. So um, I think there's some new stuff on the site. Dylan, did you want to tell us a little bit about uh, little, some new new stuff this week? Yes, we are always adding content. And uh, a lot of the things that Gus was talking about today, which was awesome to have Gus on the show because he's an incredible guitar player and an amazing career, obviously. But uh, a lot of things he was talking about, he was mentioning about playing with a metronome, uh, getting really serious about looking at time in your playing and looking at uh, just sort of some of the te technical aspects of what you're doing and knowing those things ahead of time into, into going into a solo, for instance, from an Ozzy Osbourne song is a real edge to being able to actually approach that solo and confidently play through it. So uh, a couple of the techniques that you can look up using the search bar within Fender Play to be prepared for this would be legato techniques. So these are going to be things that you're going to slow down and take really slow. And those types of uh, skills are built out on Fender Play for you to be able to learn that. Another great one that's obviously a big one is sweeping. Um, so this is the type of thing where we're taking arpeggios normally and we're building them out very slowly. And I was, it always took me a big challenge to do the upstroke on sweeping. Downstroke, it's, it's always the upstrokes. It's always the upstrokes. Downstroke yep. was always something that was pretty easy to do. It was very natural to move down because of gravity. But that upstroke, it's just, even just when you're playing, getting an accurate upstroke is a tricky thing. So, um... Skills like that and more tapping, dive bombs, the whammy bar, it just goes on and on and on. So make sure you use the search function because there's a lot of a la carte items that you can do if you're on path within Fender Play. Nice. Really cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing, Dylan. Um, and uh, if we still got Gus on the line, come on back. Yo, uh, I'm here. There he is. <laughs> hey, dude. All right. Huge thank you again to Gus G for stopping by all the way from the other side of the world. Um, you know, it's... Hopefully Thank not you, getting too late for you over there, um, but so uh, good, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, it's been a real joy having you on, talking about everything, and thanks for sharing everything you shared I, with us I really today. enjoyed hanging with you guys. Thank you for having me over. Uh, yeah. It was great for me to also revisit all these, uh, you know, the, the the Randy Rhodes stuff. You know, I grew up with that stuff and obviously spent, you know, a few years next to Ozzy playing, you know, these classics, so it was it was a pleasure for me. Thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you, great guys. Awesome. You Amazing.
Awesome. So cool. So everybody at home, do join us next week for another episode of Fender Play Live. Um, keep practicing, and uh, we'll see you next time. And everybody on that G chord, one, two, three. <laughs>